So I hope everyone can hear me. Um, obviously, my name is Aaron Hargraves, farm just south of Brandon. Um, I guess we, uh, I farm with a few of my partners, my cousins, family. Uh, that's a picture of kind of our crew that uh, was around for harvest, and that's our shop. And uh, yeah, just a few miles south of Brandon, but we do farm all the way to Suris, uh, Nesbitt, Wawanisa. So our farm does have a few different soil types in it. For the most part, they are all Carol clay loam, but definite differences in the heaviness of those soils. So um, probably a good person to listen to because I got to experience how tile works in uh, a few different types of soils. So what got us started? Um, we started tiling in 2012. And I guess I was just curious. Um, I've been on the Ag Talk forum hearing all these guys from the United States preaching tile, 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 how it's increasing their corn yields, soybean yields. And I was doing lots of research and I thought, well, you know, maybe we should give it a try. Um, particular 2011 happened. It was a long time ago, but for those of you that don't remember, um, super wet May, June. Um, the canola was stunted badly. And then we got hot and dry in July and literally watched our canola drought out. And there was, it was pure mud a foot deep and our roots were pancakes. And I said to myself, you know, something's got to be done. We got to be able to figure something out to take advantage of all that moisture down there. And tile seemed like it was the answer. So I know in our immediate area, no one had tried it before. And I guess, how do you learn without giving something a try? So um, another reason we wanted to try was salinity. Um, had heard that it had been helping. Obviously had not seen it for ourselves yet, but um, yeah, give that a try too. Variable rate. We had been shutting off our fertilizer, trying to manage expenses on the saline soils, um, doing that, but ultimately my goal was to not need variable rate, to just have the farm grow a good crop from corner to corner. And land prices were going up, um, still are, and the research and data showed good yield increases, so why not give it a shot? Um, another thing that had changed or was changing back then was the crops that we grew. These are listed in order from top to bottom, uh, moderate um, to susceptible, and then obviously the more tolerant and more susceptible crops on left to right. But 15, 20 years ago, almost our entire crop rotation was, was on the left, and that has certainly changed, and had started the change with uh, early season corn and soybeans coming in, and then even edible beans, we, we tried growing those, and We've actually been pretty successful at it. So to get started, we, uh, we purchased the plow, sent a couple guys down to a two-day course in Wapaton, and also a stringer trailer, backhoe, multiple tractors, because that plow does not necessarily pull with one tractor when you get it deep, especially with a wider boot, and base station, and then you need four people right at the busiest time of year when you're trying to harvest your crops. So. Um, that was a big challenge as well. Ultimately, we ended up giving up trying to do it ourselves just because we found that it was, it was just too much work. We were, we were burnt out by the end of harvest. I'm sure you all feel the same way. No one wanted to go out and work, uh, work in the fields, out in the cold, and you know, it's a long year, and it's, uh, it's good hard work. So, picture the stringer trailer and the backhoe. And then we also purchased the side-by-side -side to survey the fields. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Nowadays, we have technology with drones and, and LiDAR that can uh, do a much better and safer job than that. that was, I was driving it. That was the first day we owned that thing. So it didn't, uh, didn't work out too well. And my clicker is not working. There we go. So definition of a saline soil, pretty simple. Uh, soil that contains a harmful amount of salt. We all have it. I know I, I don't have a single field in our farm that doesn't have it. Um, I wish we did, but ultimately, I think salinity is, is one of our, you know, one of our biggest yield robbers, and it's every year. It's, some years it's better than others if you get, you know, lots of, 
lots of small, timely rains, but every single year it costs us money. So here we are. Um, soil type plays a role, as Marla has already mentioned. Um, our soils, being mostly Carol clay loam, can bring water up from a fair ways down, which is great in those dry years when you need it. Um, kind of like underground irrigation, but unfortunately when it brings that water up, it also brings up salt. And that, of course, is what causes the problem. So what causes salinity? I mean, Marla has already touched on this, and it's pretty straightforward. The water seeps out to the low areas, and then um, to the capillary rise, it brings the salts up to the surface, which inevitably causes the problem. So the one thing I will show you with this picture that is a problem for us is you notice where the salts are, and here's the slough or ditch. And this is a problem because tile needs to be three feet deep to successfully remove salts from the soil. And if you try to do it shallower, it does not work. I know from experience, but here you have no outlet. And so many of our fields, we do not have good outlets. Um, you either need to dig a nice deep ditch for the water to get away, or you need to invest in one of these things, a lift station. And the downside to this is, um, well, they're expensive. That's probably the biggest one. But, uh, you know, the, they increase the cost of the project a lot. And sometimes it makes it not worth doing. If you're just trying to do a 10-acre low area, you know, forty or $50,000 to put in a lift station, plus the tile, it's, you know, your cost breaker is pretty darn high. But you also need a lot of electricity. Lots of our fields where we need tile put in, no hydro lines. We did last year put in a solar-powered lift station for the first time on our farm. Um, it worked, it pumped water. We'll see how, uh, how it goes, I guess, over the next number of years, but ultimately it, it does only pump when the sun is shining. So some people have put in big battery packs to try to keep it going a little longer, but um, we elected to go with, with that system. And I guess in the meantime, when it's dark out or too cloudy, the tile system can sit full. So I'm not too sure if it's going to work or not, but we are going give to give it a shot. Of course, um, maintenance, winterizing, stuff like that, it doesn't seem like a big deal when you, we do your first one, but all of a sudden you have 10 or 15 of these things around the country and it's, you know, they, they, don't, they don't run all the time. They don't run perfect hydro. Um, goes out with storms and stuff like that, and you, um, you do find yourself driving around, checking on them all the time. And now they do have uh, remote monitoring, which we will probably be putting on a bunch of ours um, going forward here. And of course, just an app on your phone, kind of like the new state-of-the-art irrigation systems. It will tell you when the pump's running, when it is not working, stuff like that, but it seems like a good idea. And it has to be done right, like I've already said. If you look over here, this, this whole area is tiled. But we did this field ourselves, and in this ditch, kind of the similar situation to what I was describing earlier, the ditch is only a foot and a half deep. So we elected to try to cheap out and not put in a lift station. And so the tile here at the start is only about a foot and a half, two feet deep. And you can see from here, that is not water, that is, that is white salt on top of the soil. And as you get further into the field, the, the tile runs at, it's almost flat, and the slope of the field is higher, so the tile gets deeper as we are moving through the field here. This is pinto bean stubble. And if you think soybeans are susceptible to salinity, grow edible beans, way worse. So this creek here never used to even grow wheat or canola. And now it is growing edible beans right through the whole thing, except for where, of course, we installed the tile wrong. So uh, we definitely had some learning processes as we started this. Um, and I guess that's how you learn, but never fear. We have a saying in our farm, we, if we don't have enough money to do it right the first time, we'll always have enough to do it again. So we'll probably fix this at some point, but um, we'll worry about some other fields first, I guess. 
So same field. And yeah, there's, it is a little thinner in places, but keep in mind this is pinto beans and they are incredibly sensitive to salinity and it, really the, there is pinto beans growing through that whole creek bottom, which I think is incredible because you know, it couldn't even grow canola five or six years ago. So pretty impressive, I would say. And is it actually salinity? I mean, we have lots of fields where we think we have big salinity problems. And you can certainly soil test for that. And there's no doubt there was some salinity through here, but this was a valley that, that didn't grow anything. And this was just tiled one year ago, which means that the salinity problem hasn't been fixed. I think a large part of the problem was actually just cold water seeping through the side hills into the middle and giving us poor germination and just not, uh, not being able to grow much of a crop. Certainly some moderate salinity, but obviously it was never as saline as what I thought it was. So we tiled this, and this was one year later, and the wheat never would drop below 70 bushels through that creek all year. And, you know, we, pretty impressive um, what it can do. It doesn't always work that good. This was a pleasant surprise, and we do see that. And for some reason, our land at Nesbit has this has happened a few times, and I'm not sure what it is there. It's, it is a tighter soil, and germination problems may be worse, but this isn't the first field where we've seen that. And yeah, nice surprise. You know, start getting uh, your economic return from your investment faster. So, there are two types of systems you can do if you decide you want to tile a field. And the first one is pattern tiling. And this is where you are going to tile the entire field. Um, we have done that. We've, we've done both. But you know, every acre is tiled. It, this is probably what you want to do on flat fields. Guys on the eastern side of the province, are, this is probably the, going to be the approach that they're going to want to use. Um, you know, the field's going to be ready to seed early. We've definitely found that on our pattern tiled fields. You, you're going to get on them a week before you would otherwise, and you're going to get on them a week before uh, your non-tiled fields. Um, crop maturity is always extremely even. You will not get stuck on the hilltops, which, believe it or not, is a big problem for us. On the wet years, we tend to get stuck more in the hilltops than we will in the low areas. There's less topsoil, and the yellow clay under our soil will not hold things up very well when it gets completely saturated. Um, tracks have helped, but it has, has been an issue, I'm sure it is for a lot of you. And obviously it's expensive to, to do an entire field. It's, you know, it's, it costs some money for sure. So here's a section that we did. The little top corner is not included. We tiled that ourselves a few years before, but this was the plan. And we went ahead and did it with outlets going under the road down to a creek here. Another outlet going into this creek here and another one there. And yeah, it's, uh, it was one of our flatter fields. It was one of our most productive fields before we tiled it. It is certainly a very productive field now. And that's just an example of pattern tiling. Um, you know, if you were in the eastern side of the province, it would be a lot less simple, or it'd be a lot more simple. Um, all your tile would probably be going the same direction, running towards the river. But in our neck of the woods, just with the lay of the land, it's, uh, it's much more complicated and certainly a lot more work for the tile crews. The other option is selective tiling or area tiling. Um, higher cost per acre. You know, not in total, just because uh, you know, they're, they're making shorter runs, just they're digging more holes than they are actually pulling the plow, and they like to get paid um, per foot of tile going in the ground. So obviously they have to increase their rates when they're not you know, making nice long runs. Um, they're they're way, less, way less efficient than they are doing whole fields, but uh, lower cost per field, most years in our area, with, with good natural drainage on the western side of the province, I would say, I think this is probably adequate. I don't know if you really need to, to tile your entire fields. We've, we've gone to mostly doing this. Um, the return on your investment is faster because you're fixing 
the more problem areas and you know the, the hilltops and stuff, they just don't benefit as much from the tile. Are you going to get something out of it? You will, but you might be looking at a 30-year return to get your investment back versus uh, 5 to 10. So another thing we have been doing is going to tighter spacing in the areas that need it the most. So um, lots of times we will do 50 feet if we were pattern tiling a whole field. And we will do that even doing the, the, the areas. But when we get into the real problem areas within those areas, we'll tighten it up to 25. And we've had more success doing that. So there's been times we've actually gone back in because we didn't think it was working good enough or fast enough. So um, gone back in and, and tightened up those tiles. I recommend you do it right the first time. If it's a, if it's a really saline area, you have to go 25 feet, I'd say, is probably as wide as you want to go. I was reading the other day in Ontario, they're trying it all the way down to 10 feet, which just seems crazy to me and insanely expensive. It's not something I would try. And they're not doing it to get rid of salinity. They're doing it just trying to increase yields. And they, I think he said they got an extra 20 to $30 return per acre in the trial going down to 10 feet, which doesn't make economic sense. So nothing, nothing that I would try, that's for sure. So an example of one of our fields that we uh, you know, just did some area tiling on, we always end up tiling a lot more than what you think you would tile. So even though the salinity is you know, really narrow down in those creeks, we have found that if you don't stretch it out well past the outer edge of what you would consider saline, it will not work as good. You cannot just do the bottoms. You have to intercept that water flow part way up the hill um, to, get, to get it to work. And that's just what we found. We've, we've, we started doing just the bottoms and we had a few fields where we did more up the hills. Definitely found that it works way better you have to go well beyond where you see um, crop loss, in my opinion, to make it work as, as best as you can. So, so in this particular field, this is, the, uh, this is pipeline, so it made it a little more complicated. They uh, actually had to run a, a main back to the creek here, and this was a potential gravity outlet, but um, this neighbor was, he's kind of anti-tile, anti-drainage, so we ended up having to make a huge cut through the field all the way down to this major creek and then oh, no issue. So this is a picture of the exact same field I just showed you now that it is, is done, just to give you an idea how far outside of, you know, where the crop is really poor we go. And this was another field at Nesbit, and just like that picture I showed you a few slides ago, this field responded extremely well. Within two to three years, it was unbelievable the difference of, of crop growing through this creek. And this is that overcut at the far end of the field. So, yeah, huge job. This is not something that you're going to be tackling yourself if you, if you want to do something like this. I mean, it's pretty impressive what they can do, but you know, they'll dig that out and they will drive the tile plow right, right down there. And that way they ensure, you know, perfect depths on the mains, which is hugely important. Um, you know, it's not a big deal to screw up a four-inch line. You can always go back and fix that, but if you, if you screw up the main, you know, you've got big problems because it's, it's really, uh, you want to do it right the first time. This is kind of a poor resolution picture, but this is actually at harvest time, so the field is, for the most part, mature. This field is south of Brandon. And these areas, this is, this is weeds, this is kochia, growing in the, in the salty areas. So um, this is a few years old. It wasn't Roundup resistant kochia back then. It would be today if it was still there. Um, but yeah, this is the picture four years later, the same field. This was another field where the tile worked extremely well on. South of Brandon, it also works very well. When we get over to our surface land, the results haven't been quite as good. I'm not 100% sure why. The soil's a little bit different, I guess, but certainly still good results, but I mean, this is exceptional. So there's some challenges to tiling. Um, public perception of any drainage is, of course, uh, negative. I think, 
you know, you visibly see these, these pumps pumping water out into the ditches and stuff, and, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. Um, environmental concerns with end losses. Um, we have tested the nitrogen levels coming out of our tile. There is some nitrogen in the water for sure. Of course, as there's field runoff, there's also going to be some nitrogen in that as well. Landowner's permission, I think, is, is becoming easier. Um, fear of the unknown is, it's becoming more known. It's becoming much more common. You know, I know farmers that I have never dreamed would, would have thought of tiling in our area have been putting tile in the last few years. And it's, it's good to see. I, I think it's great for, for many reasons. Uh, you never know what the new regulations are going to be coming out. Um, tile on manured fields, I have heard in Portage, you cannot tile um, fields that have manure being applied to them now, which I think is crazy because I would way rather see water coming off a field that has manure applied coming out of a lift station or a tile than I would see running off because, of course, you know, phosphate moves with soil, it binds to the soil very tightly, and water coming out of a lift station or a tile is crystal clear. I've drank it, you put it in this water bottle, it would look the exact same. It's, it's beautiful. Um, versus runoff, surface runoff, obviously. Well, we've all seen the rivers and creeks. You know, there's soil in that water for sure. So, And it can take time. And it's sometimes, like I said, at Nesbitt, we see results lots of times in one or two years to fix, you know, the spots where the, the salinity isn't strong. Where, it, where it's really bad, it, does, it still takes a long time. But, and of course, expensive. Tile has limits, seven inches of rain in, uh, in 24 hours. That's our lift station. Obviously, just recycling the water right back onto the field. Um, that was actually 2022. So not that long ago, it's hard to believe that, uh, you know, you can get seven inches of rain in one day when it seems, well, 21 and 23, we couldn't get seven inches of rain all year. But, yeah, you're, you're, down, uh, you're downstream. Like, you, you know, it has to have the ability to get the water away, and the infrastructure is just not, just not there for seven and a half inches of rain. But environmental benefits of tiling, and I think there's lots, and I really like it. But surface runoff is reduced by 65%. Um, I, in my opinion, overall runoff of the whole field is reduced as well, but peak water flow is reduced significantly, depending on which study you look at, um, which I think is great too, especially in areas like the picture I just showed where, you know, the municipal infrastructure is just not adequate. Um, phosphate loss is obviously a hot topic in Manitoba. Five minutes, okay. And nitrogen losses, there is a bit, but also denitrification is significantly reduced. I'm almost a little surprised that there isn't more talk from the federal government on this because um, you know, it's a greenhouse gas much stronger than CO2. For whatever reason, they really want to focus on CO2 when, you know, solving denitrification on farms would, would be a huge benefit to the environment. Economic benefits. Um, you know, like Manitoba, Western Canada, there's... We've had wet years, it's hard to remember that after a year like this, but um, certainly... The canola numbers are pretty, you know, returns are pretty bad here, but, um, you know, 14 bushel canola, 50 bushels, $700 an acre gross, cost of production, I just took the provincial crop product, cost of production, I took 20 bucks off for cheaper fertilizer, probably should have took something off because Liberty's come down a lot as well, but I also think the cost of equipment is increasing at an alarming rate and would offset some of that. But $17 an acre net profit, it looks like, for next year. Tiled ground with a, you know, a modest 10% increase in productivity, $87 per acre net profit, five times the net profit. Still, if you look at the cost of tiling today, it, it's going to take some time. So saline ground, though, is much quicker. If uh, you, you sow canola on a saline patch, you might get 15 bushels, $210 an acre gross, I have seen canola yield 60, 65, 70 bushels an acre in places that used to grow 15. So, and I mean through the whole creek, it, it's unbelievable. Um, but I used 45. Obviously, the gross return difference is massive, and 
and you can pencil that out in, uh, in a few years. So cost these days is high. Um, I hope it goes down. I think it will with the price of, of corn and grains um, recently going down so much. It, it just has to. People won't do it. It is 100% tax deductible in the first year. It's an effective tax management tool to get you out of a bind. And, uh, you know, you can kind of make some more money in years going forward when maybe things are a little tougher. So unexpected benefits, corn matures earlier. We've seen it. We have areas of fields tiled. It's always tasseling earlier where it's tiled. It allows us to grow a wider variety of crops, you know, in particular edible beans, which have been great for us. Less stress about weather. Weed control is huge. It's one I'm going to take a second to talk about. Roundup resistant kochia is prevalent in our area. And I would say in a tiled field, we are reducing the amount of kochia in that field by 75 to 90% easy. And all of a sudden, it's not as huge a problem. I hope every single neighbor that I have tiles all their saline areas. I will tile all ours, but it is a hugely effective tool in kochia, in management of kochia. So. It's been an unexpected benefit. We didn't really think about it when we were tiling 10 years ago, but now that it's round up resistant, really notice it. And less trips returning to, uh, to wet areas as well. You know, you're not driving the cedar back. Our farm's spread out. You're not driving the cedar back 30 miles to go seed a two-acre patch because uh, it's, it's dry with the rest of the field now. So is tile the answer? It's the best tool in the toolbox that we've found. Um, we have tried some other things, but Nothing works like tile. It's like Marla said, you have to solve the water problem, and that's, that's really the only long-term solution. So results vary. Compaction, soil type, rainfall. Um, you have to leach the salts out of the soil. If, if it's on a headland by a road that is so compacted that the water can't actually go down through the soil to get into the tile, it, it's just not going to work, or it's going to take a long, long time. And... In some instances where it's really bad, it does have a hard time solving it 100%. It, it will shrink your saline areas, I guarantee you that, by a lot. But sometimes where the salinity is really bad, you know, we haven't recaptured it all 100% yet. Especially if you stick a field like, or a crop like edible beans out there, it will still show up. So, other reasons to tile. Fall 2019, of course, no one liked that. And there's my dad with a spade. He's going to dig out the sprayer, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I guess he's just waiting on a tractor, but he seemed to think he was going to make a difference there. So thank you guys for coming, and thank you to Brett Sheffield, a good friend of mine. Um, huge loss to, to the tiling community and the agricultural community for sure, but probably responsible for 90 plus percent of the tile in our farm. And uh, yeah, I miss him, so thanks to him too. Questions? <laughs> if we have time. Okay, so, um, yes, I wouldn't say a, like a, a pond per se, but we have done potholes where you can call, they put in French drains is what they call it, and you can either um, put in like a, a, you know, rock, like gravelly rock above, above the tile in, that, in, a, in the bottom of it, or you can, I don't know, we call them straws, I'm not sure what they're technically called, but um, they basically come up, and uh, the water can flow more directly into them. We don't do it very often. We have done it. It does work great. It will uh, empty those potholes very quickly. Um, but yes, it is possible. And then, you know, this, it would take the water straight down into the four-inch tile and, and carry on uh, out the main. But um, yeah, we have done that for sure. Anyone else? Um, you know, it's, 
I don't, I don't have the numbers. If, uh, if Mylan was here, maybe he's here, I'm not sure. He would know the capacity, but you can, you can size it um, however you want, obviously. Um, the solar panels in the field are, are quite large and it will pump a lot of water very fast. Um, you know, the, it'd be a pipe, I believe it's a six inch pipe and it'll fill it right up and pump it out uh, quite quickly, so. Uh, sorry, Mylan? A thousand gallons per minute. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for sharing your experiences with us. I'm sure there's more questions in the crowd. Are you going to maybe find your way out or yeah, are you be around for a while? Well, I, I answered a lot of questions on tile <laughs> yesterday and last night, but certainly if anyone sees me around, they're more than welcome to, to stop and ask me. Um, if anyone has, uh, I should have, my Twitter's, you know, if you search me up on Twitter, you can catch me there, or, uh, Facebook. Um, I'll answer questions, anyone has, for sure. Okay, thanks again. Thanks. Thank you for having me.